My name is Salim ul -Haq. I'm Director of the International Center for Climate Change and Development in Bangladesh and also a Senior Fellow at the International Institute for Environment and Development uh, in London. And I'm going to talk about an issue called loss and damage, which is a very important and politically uh, sensitive topic in the UNFCC uh, process. Uh, for 19 years, the vulnerable countries, primarily the small island developing states, supported by the least developed countries and the countries in Africa, had been raising this issue of what do we do if we fail to mitigate or we fail to successfully mitigate, which has happened already, and we fail to successfully adapt, which may well happen. And we have inevitable losses and damages. Just to give you a very crude uh, example of what we mean, some of the low-lying atoll islands in the Pacific, like Tuvalu and Kiribati, may simply go underwater with a sea level rise of a meter and the islands will disappear. So a member state of the United Nations will disappear off the face of the earth. It's an unprecedented problem. We haven't faced something like this before and we need to think about it. And these countries have been raising this issue of loss and damage for many, many years in the process but have not succeeded in getting it uh, taken uh, into consideration until uh, very recently, when with the support of the developing countries more generally, an agreement was reached on loss and damage at the 19th Conference of Parties, which was held in Warsaw. It's called the Warsaw International Mechanism on Loss and Damage. And it has a work program now, which was agreed in Lima at the 20th Conference of Parties, for two years, which takes it to COP22, not in Paris, but the year after Paris, probably in Morocco, uh, where we will have to make another decision. Now, the politically sensitive part of this is that the developed countries fear talking about loss and damage will inevitably lead to uh, demands for compensation based on liability. Um, and that's what they're afraid of. They don't, these two words, liability and compensation, are taboo words. That's why we use the euphemistic terms, loss and damage, uh, as a more neutral term. But they have agreed to the, the loss and damage work program, and we hope that uh, we'll be able to work on it. There's an executive committee which has just recently been form formed. All the members have been nominated. They'll be meeting in September in Bonn. They'll be meeting several times more before COP22 in uh, Morocco in December 2016, where a new decision will be made. Uh, so we have reasonably good progress now on various aspects of how we're going to deal with loss and damage in the longer term through the Warsaw International Mechanism. But there is another also politically sensitive issue here, which is to do with Paris. In the Paris text, or the negotiating text for the Paris Agreement, at the moment, the developing countries have asked for a sentence to be included, recognizing loss and damage as an important new issue, other than mitigation and adaptation. The alternate language that has been proposed by Annex 1, the rich countries, is to simply delete all reference to loss and damage. And in Bonn, uh, just a few weeks ago, this was discussed in the negotiations, uh, but no resolution was made. Both options are still on the table. This will probably be one of the crunch issues that go to the end in Paris and probably will be resolved uh, at the very end on the 11th of December or if we go into overtime on the 12th of December uh, this year. So um, I'll be doing more video logs as we get up uh, towards Paris over the next few months, and I will be specifically doing some of them on this topic of loss and damage as we move forward on the topic if there is further news on it. So please keep uh, watch out for the, the future video logs that we'll be doing uh, between now and December.